Donald Trump has officially rescinded his endorsement for Republican Congressman Mo Brooks in Alabama Senate race. In response, Brooks is now coming forward with what he says he knows about Donald Trump's plot to undermine and overturn democracy as we know it. Today, Brooks released a statement saying in part that Trump had asked him to rescind the 2020 election, like put Trump back in the White House and hold a new election. Just now, our own NBC News correspondent Vaughn Hilliard spoke to Congressman Brooks on the phone and asked him about these remarkable claims. Did he directly tell you to fight to decertify the election, the 2020 election? He did not use the word decertify. He used the word rescind. Rescind. What did that mean to you? Well, I'm a lawyer. Rescind means that you render it null and void. Do you guys have the power to do that in Congress? No. And then immediately remove Joe Biden. I guess that would be through impeachment? Through the rescission of the election results. Got it. And then he did he say that he wanted Congress to immediately put him back into the White House? Okay, you're using the word Congress. Yeah. My statement doesn't say Congress. We never got that far because I explained to the president that what he asked is legally impossible and it violates the United States Constitution, and I'm not going to do it. So how did he want you to put him back into the White House? Through a rescinding of the 2020 elections. And then he requested of you to create a new special election for the presidency. Well, that would be the natural follow-up to the rescinding of the election. Did he directly say that there should be a new special election for the presidency? In one of the conversations, he mentioned having a subsequent election for the presidency. And this was after this Labor Day? After September 1st of twenty. 21. Vaughn Hilliard, who conducted that interview, joins me now. Great work, Vaughn. I'm trying to get to the bottom of this. So a few things here. So he we didn't study this in American government. Did right. We? I mean, I guess, I guess we have to start there, right? Like the ask isn't just plainly illegal and unconstitutional, but like not really sensical in the sense of like, there is no plausible mechanism for the thing that he's asking. Right, and I think Mo Brooks was trying to work his way through his own conversation with Donald Trump. We're talking about eight months after January 2021 when Donald Trump was out of the White House here. And when we're talking about Mo Brooks, why do we care about Mo Brooks? This is the man, the staunch ally of Donald Trump, who on January 6th, just moments before that insurrection, stood on that stage of the, the, the so-called Save America rally and spoke into that microphone, quote, today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. This is the man that Donald Trump today, by rescinding his endorsement, threw off of his ship. But also the, the idea, I mean, the, we know, look, we know that Trump, um, we know that Trump refused to elect, you know, accept the free and fair election, right? That he promoted a big lie, that he worked every angle possible to forestall the peaceful transfer of power, up into including talking to the mob, sending them towards the Capitol. What we're learning from this is that he is actively, at least as of Labor Day, like actively now attempting to reach out to people in power to like install him now. Install him now. Get Joe Biden out of office and get him back in and then do this so-called sub uh, subsequent special election here. And that is why this is more than January 2021 that we're talking about. This is a political active machine here. Donald Trump's super PAC has more than $110 million. That's more than the DNC and the RNC combined here. This is a man who still essentially runs this Republican Party. There is no widespread dissent or uprising here. He is on his way to win the nomination here again. That's why this goes beyond January 2021. But the big question here is, if you are throwing off an ally like Mo Brooks, are you potentially overplaying your hand here. He is trying to primary with Republican challengers, nine current Republican congressmen and women here. At some point in these months ahead, do some of these individuals look to Mike Pence, look to others to finally say, we know we've been doing this for six years, but enough is enough. Well, and also, I mean, we should be clear here. He says the reason he's rescinding Mo Brooks is something that Mo Brooks said months ago, when it becomes, it's very clear to me at least that he 
backed the wrong horse in this primary, and his endorsement isn't carrying water because Mo Brooks is pulling a distant third. Where's his influence? Exactly. This is Donald Trump's thing. He usually only picks winners, right. right? But now two months before the primary, his candidate appears to be a loser. He is now third in several polls here, and right before a potential his potential candidate doesn't even make the runoff, he's rescinding his endorsement here. Right. And that is where I bring up overplaying his hand. He's yeah. made several endorsements here in 2022. And if he's not able to prove that those Republicans, like Mo Brooks, are able to be successful when he goes on to Alabama, stands on that stage and tells Republican voters, vote for my guy, and they say, sorry, we appreciate you, but we're not gonna vote for your guy. Does that start to make other Republicans question Donald Trump's relevance and influence here in 2022? I think we are seeing that happen day by day before our eyes. I think that's the subtext here.